In today's video, I will show you how you can have an AI teacher guiding you live as you learn Blender and pretty much any software you want. I think it's about time we dive into the world of artificial intelligence, not because it's trending, but because I really think as artists, AI should be in our arsenal. We'll use an AI tool and the power of real-time responses to guide us directly when using Blender. We're gonna start with basic tasks that beginners could need help with. Then we'll try to create a car animation using the Riga car add-on. Let's see if it can actually teach us something or just mess things up. The tool in question is the stream function you'll find inside the AI studio from Google. It's a free tool. You only need to use your Google account to log in. I will put the link in the description. Inside AI Studio, you click here on Stream. For those options, the model by default is the best we can use, so Gemini 2.5. You can select the voice you want to talk to. I like to activate proactive audio, so the model do not answer when I'm not talking directly to him. Then I activate grounding with a Google search, so it has the option to use Google search if needed. You click on share screen. Here you can select the app you want to stream, or in my case, I will select the entire screen one. Then you press the share button. From there, you will have this little window showing what you are sharing with the model. Be sure to have those icons activated. Uh, they should be blue. This one to listen to your voice live and this one for the screen sharing. Now we can open Blender and test our new virtual coach. Let's do a quick test. Hey, Gemini, could you tell me the color of the cube? The cube is blue. Okay, first question. Could you tell me how I could delete this cube, please? To delete the cube, you can press the X key on your keyboard and then confirm the deletion. Alternatively, you can press the delete key. Now I would like to add a UV sphere. How could I create one, please? To add a UV sphere, you can press the Shift plus A on your keyboard to open the Add menu. Then select Mesh and choose UV sphere from the options. Okay, great. Uh, how to animate this UV sphere? I want it to move on the X axis. To animate the UV sphere along the x-axis, first, ensure you're at the beginning of your timeline, usually frame one. Then, select the sphere, press I on your keyboard to insert a keyframe, and select location. Next, move to a desired frame in the timeline, move the sphere along the x-axis to the desired position, and press I again to insert another location keyframe. Blender will then interpolate the movement between these keyframes. Okay, now I would like this sphere to be red. Could you tell me how to do that, please? To change the color of the sphere to red, first select the sphere, then go to the Material Properties tab, which is usually located on the right-hand side of the screen. If there is no material assigned, click New to create a new material. Then, in the Base Color setting, Click on the color swatch and choose a red color from the color picker. I did what you said, but this cube is still gray. You know how I could display it red? You might need to change the viewport shading to see the colors. Look for the shading options in the top right corner of the 3D viewport. Try selecting Material Preview or Rendered Shading Modes. This should show you the materials you've applied, including the red color. As we can see, it seems that our coach is pretty good with basic operations. Now, let's try to animate a car with the Riga car add-on. I have a car, a C63 AMG, in this blend file, and I would like to have it in my scene. How could I do that, please? To add an existing object from another Blender file, you can use the Append function. Go to the File menu, select Append, and then locate the Blender file with the car you want to import. Once you open the file, Navigate to the Object folder, find the car object you want, and then click Append. This will bring the car into your current scene. Okay, great. As you can see, I have a rig already installed on this car. This is a rig coming from the rig car add-on. And I would like to animate this car along a path. How could I do that, please? To animate the car along a path, you'll first need to create a path object. You can do this by pressing Aft Shift plus A, going to Curve, and then selecting a path option, like a Bezier curve or a path. Once you have the path, select the car's main control object, usually the master rig controller, and then shift select the path. Finally, press Control plus P and choose Follow Path. This will constrain the car to move along the path. Can you check my screen? 
as you can see, uh, I can do that, but it's still selecting all the bones. Hmm. It looks like the entire rig is being selected. To select only the master bone, try switching to pose mode in the body 3D viewport. You can do this through the menu at the top or by pressing control plus tab and selecting pose mode. Then try selecting the master bone directly. This should allow you to select individual bones within the rig. Okay, great. This way I managed to select only the master bone. Now, I'm not sure how to do this follow path constraint stuff. Could you help me please? How could I do that? Could you look at my screen and tell me which icon should I use? Okay, I can guide you with that. First, make sure the master bone is still selected. Then go to the properties window on the right side of your screen. Look for the constraint properties icon, which looks like a chain link. Click on that icon and then click the add bone constraint button. From the list, choose the follow path constraint. After selecting it, you'll need to specify the curve path you want the car to follow in the constraint settings. Okay, is it uh, this uh, icon, the bone constraints one, the blue one? Then I have the add bone constraint, is it this one? Yes, that's the correct icon. Click on the bone constraints icon, then click on the add bone constraint button and select follow path from the list. After that, you'll need to specify the curve object in the constraint settings so the card knows which path to follow. Okay, great. Uh, what should I select for the forward axis? For the forward axis, you should select the axis that represents the front of the car in your setup. Okay, in my case, it's minus Y. Okay. If you've determined that negative Y is the correct forward axis for your rig, then select that option. This should ensure the car moves along the path in the correct direction. What about the fixed position, curve radius, and follow curve, those options? Should I tick some of them? For basic movement along the path, you generally don't need to check fixed position or curve radius. However, you should check the follow curve option to make sure the car rotates and aligns with the direction of the path. The animate path option is for making the car move automatically along the path over time. So if you want to control the movement manually, you can leave that unchecked. And I have an issue. My car is not resting directly on the path. It's, it seems to have a gap. So how could I fix this gap? To fix the gap, you can adjust the vertical position of the master bone. Make sure you are in pose mode, then select the master bone. Use the move tool, usually by pressing G, to lower the bone until the car is resting directly on the curved path. You may need to adjust this position carefully to ensure proper alignment. Okay, I will do it my way, so I put here zero. And for your information, I did use object uh, properties and just uh, update the Y location to zero. So everything is at zero, as you can see now in the transform panel. Okay, now that I have my car on the path and everything is set up, how can I animate it? You'll want to use the follow path constraint. Then click on the animate path button. This will create keyframes for the car to follow the path automatically. I would like to do that manually. I don't want to use the animate path. So I like to click on fixed position to have the offset factor from zero to one. Could you help me to animate the car from there, please? Sure. You can control the car's movement manually along the path using the offset factor. With the fixed position option checked, go to the beginning of your timeline, set the offset factor to zero and insert a keyframe there. Then go to the end of your timeline, set the offset factor to one and insert another keyframe. This will make the car travel along the entire path over the specified time frame. Okay, great. But my car is accelerating, then slowing down. I would prefer to have a constant speed. How could I do that, please? To make the car move at a constant speed, you need to change the interpolation mode of the keyframes. Go to the graph editor, select all the keyframes for the offset factor, then press T to bring up the interpolation menu. Choose Linear as the interpolation mode. This will ensure the car moves at a constant speed throughout the animation. Okay, great. But it seems that my car is too slow. How could I uh, speed up the animation, please? You can speed up the animation by changing the end frame of the timeline. If you shorten the timeline duration, the car will travel the same path in less time, effectively speeding up the animation. You can adjust the end frame and the timeline settings at the bottom of the screen. Okay, perfect. Now let's work on the path. I would like to change the shape of the path. How could I do that, please? To change the shape of the path, 
select the path curve itself, then go into edit mode. You can now manipulate the individual control points of the curve to reshape the path as you desired. Once you're happy with the new shape, exit edit mode. Hey, there is some something strange happening when I move the control points, my car is deforming. Do you know how I could fix that? It sounds like the car is deforming because it's following the curve's deformation. To fix this, select the car again, go to the Constraint Properties panel, and make sure the Follow Curve option is unchecked. This should prevent the car from deforming when you adjust the path. Okay, the correct way to do that is just to apply all transform on the path. So all the transformation are applied, then my car is not deforming anymore. Yes, applying all transformations to the path is a great way to fix it. This resets the path scale and rotation, so the car doesn't deform when following it. It ensures the animation follows the intended path without any unexpected distortions. When I want to edit the path, how could I add some more control points, please? To add more control points to the path, first select the path curve, then go into edit mode by pressing tab. You can then select existing control points and use the subdivide command to add new ones, or select a segment between points and extrude new points to shape the path further. Okay, now everything is set up using the rigger car add-on. How could I automatically animate the wheel rotation and the steering? With the rigger car add-on, you can automatically animate the wheel rotation and steering. First, select the car rig, then go to its properties. You should find settings there that allow you to enable automatic wheel rotation and steering animation based on the car's movement along the path. Adjust these options to get the desired effect. Okay, great. Now for the animation and with the rigger car add-on, could you tell me how I could simulate a braking animation, a brake animation at the end of the car animation, you know? So it's braking, so there is a centrifugal force. To simulate a braking animation with rig a car, you can adjust the car's speed along the path using the offset factor and set keyframes for that value. Additionally, you can use the rig a car add-ons features to control the braking force and weight transfer, which will affect the car's suspension and wheel rotation to simulate a realistic braking effect. You can set keyframes for these parameters as well to define the braking action over time. Okay guys, so you saw it's pretty good, but it seems that you still have to know one or two stuff in order to be really confident when you use this kind of tool. And I think it's really oriented uh, for beginners because when I try some more advanced command or advanced uh, animation like the break or drift, it's not really telling me how to do that. So yeah, I think overall it's good for beginners when you don't know the shortcuts or maybe how to do simple stuff. But when you try to be creative and you want to do more advanced stuff like drifting, for example, uh, I think the tool is not uh, ready <laughs> yet <laughs> to assist you for, for that. But hey, it's free and I think it's a, it's a pretty good tool for beginners. Okay, guys, uh, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you like this uh, little video of my first video on an AI tool. Hey, tell me in the comment section if it's okay if I present you more tools, uh, maybe some tools to create some great uh, visuals. And I talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.